lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing the wrap up for all the books that I read in May, kind of. So May was a very strange reading month for me so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to break my wrap up into two separate videos. This video is going to talk about the four books that I managed to read for Springathon as well as a couple of titles I slipped in at the end of the month that were slightly more mood reading inspired. But I had a really weird reading month during May where I was really struggling to kind of focus and I end up with a bit of a book kind of hangover from the first two reads that I'm going to talk about in a minute that I absolutely adored. And I was kind of not really in the mood for a lot of nature writing so I ended up reading something like 15 non um 15 contemporary romance novels slash novellas some of which were reread some of which were brand new to me so because I know that that's not everybody's cup of tea and because that's going to make a really long video in its own right I'm going to put them in a separate wrap-up video that will be coming out in like three or four days time so today is going to be about some of the books that I read for Springathon and then these kind of mood reading books the first book that I finished in the month of May for Springathon was actually the group book and that is The Way Through the Woods by uh, Long Lit Wound this is Overcoming Grief Through Nature and I actually read this alongside another book that I'm going to talk about in a second and the two really worked well together. This is a memoir slash science writing book that is looking at mushrooms and mushroom foraging. Long Lit Wound lost her husband and it is about her kind of rediscovering her joy in life in general, kind of the grieving process of him dying so suddenly through the process of joining the mushroom foraging community. Now that is a thread through the entire book but the bulk of it is actually looking at the science behind mushrooms, the sort of societal um, like the society of, of mushroom foraging and sort of some of the in internal politics, what you do with the mushrooms, eating them, the joy of food and just generally conversations around that. I think it's an absolutely beautiful book I and I ended up with like a really strong book hangover after it because it was just exactly what I'm looking for in nature writing. It's that perfect blend of the personal and then the impersonal in terms of the real like hard science and for me it balanced them very nicely. If you are a fan of memoir this is a little bit lighter on that side of things so you might find there to be too much science but I personally really enjoyed enjoyed it and I actually read this alongside the other book that I finished um, that was kind of a group book for Springathon but not quite which is Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake and this one is also about mushrooms but branching out to actually discuss fungi in general and sort of mycelium and um, fungal uh, bacterium and what is their role within our kind of natural world, how do we understand them scientifically and it worked really well reading it alongside The Way Through the Woods because the two kind of worked in parallel really nicely. There would be something mentioned in Entangled Life and then there'd be sort of a personal example of it in The Way Through the Woods. Fungi are incredible, they are absolutely fascinating. I had no idea about so many of the things in them and I very much thought it was just be a book about mushrooms that's incredibly limiting view from my part and I'm really pleased to have read this book to like open my eyes to the fascinating and incredible world of what funky do. There are chapters on psychedelics but there's also ones on the zombie fungus that I've talked about previously in videos because it's mentioned in a few different horror books that I've read. Incredibly cool. These fungi are like evolved to take over the brains of various different kinds of insects and then sort of essentially take them over and make them like mini zombie ants or mini zombie like cicadas or whatever and then in doing so we'll get them to like travel to a specific point that's beneficial for the fungi and then essentially like blow up their heads or like explode out their asses and then like scatter their spores everywhere incredibly terrifying oh my god so cool and there are like fungi out there that can live off of radioactive waste they are wild like when climate change inevitably buries us into like as the sea level rises and the polar bears uprise fungi are going to be the clear winners out of this they are amazing so because of these two books i then ended up actually in such a like weird book hangover where i blitzed both of them in like four days at the beginning of the month and then i just i didn't really want to read anything else i just wanted to kind of bask in the glory that was mushrooms and fungi and mycelium and like weird plants and then everything else kind of paled in comparison so um yeah i kind of struggled with the rest of the month to be entirely honest one of the books that i did get finished was braiding sweetgrass by robin wall Kim chimera this is indigenous wisdom scientific knowledge and the teachings of plants it's individual essays looking at particular plants and um, robin's relationship with the plants both from a scientific perspective but also from her indigenous native american perspective and discussing the role that they have within the native community but also science and kind of how she growing up and then working within the scientific field has balanced these two kind of often what feel like quite conflicting views of western ideas of kind of the impersonal and the the very um removed view of science to the more native inspired ideas of kind of connection and sort of oneness with the world I generally enjoyed it but I just feel like this book was too long and it got quite repetitive and I find with essay like 
um, with essay collections you know there are going to be individual essays that really speak to you and there definitely were quite a few in this but overall each essay kind of pulls me out of it because we don't get that like real flow of sort of building up to something it's just kind of each individual bitty chunks so for me it feels like the book takes way longer because I'm kind of constantly having to restart that process of jumping into a new topic over and over again and there is this sort of thread through and kind of overarching vague theming to it but for me I like things to be structured a little bit more formally um, but very powerful very beautiful so it's the kind of thing that if you like essay collections more than me you probably would enjoy it and I think it was just more of a formatting issue rather than the content itself and if it had taken out maybe just five essays and made it like you know 60 or 70 pages shorter I'd have been way happier with it. I then also started Feral by George Monbiot and this is supposed to be about rewilding which is the idea of reintroducing various um, kind of keystone um, species into various areas to kind of give back to nature and remove intensive farming and instead try and create more eco diversity. So I was really interested in it because of this fact and I wanted the like super scientific side of things but I only got about three chapters in because it was just a bunch of George's stories of him like going on insane traveling like talking about him like fishing and things and his kind of stance on rewilding was just like he lives in the UK and he really wishes there were just more cool species when he's out for his walk and that really was not what I was looking for in a book about rewilding and I did not have the patience to try and see to the end to see if it got more sciencey. I flipped through a few Goodreads reviews, a lot of people seemed to agree with me that it was far more of like a travel writing than actual science writing book and off the back of having such a book hangover of the first two books that I talked about, um, I did not have the patience or energy so I have DNF'd it, it's off my shelf. I need to find a different book about rewilding so if you have any recommendations I've read Wilding by Isabella Tree. I want something like that, but more sciencey. Let me know. And then the only fiction book that I read for Springathon in particular is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. This is quite a fun, quirky horror book which is told from the point of view of a domesticated crow. And it's about a zombie apocalypse that takes over humanity. And then it's about this crow basically trying to save the other domesticated animals and sort of the um, reintroduction of like nature kind of taking over and the humans being out of the picture but then him wanting to sort of be a voice for the domesticated. For me it was quirky, it was fun, there were some fantastic turns of phrase, like it had a real lovely um, wry smile kind of moment like every other page, but it just didn't go anywhere and the plot was really like slow and draggy and then it did this whole thing where the zombie apocalypse was due to phones and cell phones and the internet and like humans have let technology take over their life and I just I get so bored of that kind of rhetoric like I know we're removed from nature anymore you're not smart or clever like get over it like people didn't talk anymore before phones they just sat and read newspapers like come on let's move on so for me I think I gave this like three stars it was fun and fairly quick read um but it's one and like if you enjoy kind of unconventional narrators because obviously it's narrated by a crow that was kind of cool but for me it was um nice idea not fantastically executed and not much substance then I read Slay by Brittany Morris and I really really enjoyed this this was a YA contemporary about a black girl who has um, created her own online video um, video game or like RPG um, which is entirely for the black community it's filled with all sorts of internal references which you'd only understand as being part of the black community and then and she's like it's she's the secret creator of it and then basically a kid ends up dying in real life due to a trade for like um, game items that goes badly and then suddenly her game and all that it entails is thrust into the spotlight and there are all sorts of accusations of reverse racism and it's about her trying to deal with this. It's a little heavy handed in places with the whole kind of sort of wokeness um, but in the way that only like YA can be and I definitely don't disagree with anything it said but, but it just like said it very bluntly on the page and I think it's the kind of thing that like it sort of interrupted the story occasionally but I think that that's just like a feature of YA writing you know it is it does tend to be more upfront regardless of what it's discussing. I really liked um, the main character, I really enjoyed all the various kind of cultural references, the few of them that I did get because obviously I'm not part of that community but I enjoyed the ones that I did understand and as somebody who plays World of Warcraft I loved the video game features. This is like Ready Player One if Ready Player One was actually good like I'm sorry that book is trash this is amazing you should read it instead um so yeah I had a really good time and it was the perfect like completely different palette cleansing kind of book that I desperately needed in this sort of weird mini reading slump I'd kind of kick myself into and it just sort of like was fun and fast paced but like serious in in the right kind of way and just like great imagery and yeah it was just just 
exactly what I kind of needed in that reading moment. So a surprisingly fantastically good read. And then the final one that I finished is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. I listened to this on audiobook and this is a classic from one of the Bronte sisters. I really like Anne's writing. I read The Tenant of Wildfell Hall um, a couple of years ago and deeply enjoyed it. It's probably one of my favourite classics out there. Agnes Grey is often um, spoken of nowhere near as highly. A lot of people don't enjoy it and I I was pleasantly surprised. I did not like it as much as Tenet of Wildfell Hall, but I had a good time. And Agnes Grey, our titular character, is a governess who comes from a family that are a little bit down on their luck, so she goes to work for a couple of different families as being a governess to their children, and it's about kind of her experiences within these families. She's a little bit of a sad sap at the beginning, not gonna lie, she lets these kind of spoiled brat kids run around her, and that definitely got very tiresome very quickly. But I did enjoy the conversations about what was it like to be a governess at the time, which was very much a theme that the Brontes love to write about you know the sort of hard done by um lower middle class woman who this is the only way that she can make her living and sort of the abysmal conditions that the family would kind of treat her to and i enjoyed sort of the budding moments towards the end and the general social commentary and i just really like Anne Bronto's writing it just sort of had a nice flow to it and it felt like kind of a cozy comfy read like i say again after my my reading slump it sort of felt um like sinking to a warm bath it was just kind of nice and relaxing once we got past the screaming brats at the beginning there was a brief window at the beginning where i was like i don't know if i can do this and then she changed his family and I was like oh this is better okay we can keep reading now so yeah surprisingly good read and that's it like I said very strange reading month so um I have way more books to come at you but they're gonna be in a separate wrap up um because I'm not talking about 15 contemporary romances after talking for about 10 minutes about these so a much shorter dramatically less successful springathon than I was hoping for but I think that that's okay I'm trying to give myself permission to not immediately read the things on my TBR, to let mood reading happen, to not read when I don't want to read, and to just kind of kick back a little bit, um, because I definitely can get a bit type A about this channel and about reading and about hitting goals, and it's sometimes it's nice just to read the random YA book about video games because you want to and it doesn't matter that it's not about nature writing because it's just what you want to read in that moment. So yeah, have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye! <laughs>